God has really laid the word thankfulness on my heart and, and living a, a thankful lifestyle. You know, in this time, in this generation, the way the world is today, it's kind of hard to be thankful, right? We, we get in our own way, and we, we start to, to complain. We start to get angry. We start to, to fuss and, and this and that and get offended, and we forget what God has done for us. So I want to start here this morning you would pray with me and then we'll jump right into it all right father god in jesus name lord i just thank you for being here this morning and i thank you for coming ahead of us lord and preparing this place for your people to come in here and hear what you have to say today god thank you for moving god thank you for our salvation god thank you for the opportunity to be here and god i just pray that you open our hearts and ears lord jesus to hear what you have to say to us today and, and, and God, I just, um, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this church family, Lord. God, do your thing today. I send Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. So we need to start living a lifestyle of thankfulness. Amen. We need to, we need to wake up every day and be thankful that we're able to get out of bed. We need to be thankful that we can come to church on a Sunday morning. We need to be thankful that we have a job to go to on Monday morning. We need to be thankful that we have a family that we can talk to, whether it's your, your blood family or your church family. We just need to be thankful. Amen? All right. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18 says this. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you, in Christ Jesus. So does that just mean give thanks when things are going good? Does it mean give thanks when you got a raise at work? Give thanks when, when your kids are, are doing good, they're doing good in school, they're, they're prospering? No, it means to give thanks in everything you do. Give thanks no matter what the situation is. We have this, uh, this wall hanging, this picture that... Uh, We've got in our house, it says there's always, always something to be thankful for. Amen? We can think of something right now, just in a split second, that you are thankful for. Amen? So right now, I want you to look at the person next to you or the person closest to you and say, I'm thankful to see you today. I'm thankful, thankful you're here today. I'm ready to be thankful. Amen. Are you ready to be thankful? All right, here we go. So through this, um, this word of thankfulness that, that God has been laying on my heart, the, the next word that came to my mind is frustrated, frustration. You know, I, I'd been getting frustrated a lot um, through this last, last season of my life, whether it be with work, with family, with, with church, with this, with that. It seems like so much stuff was going on, and I couldn't do any of them very good. Has anybody ever been there where you just get so wrapped up, you get so busy, and you forget to be thankful and you become frustrated? So it's when you become frustrated, that's when you become stagnant. That's when you become comfortable in where you're at, and that's when you quit moving. So what are some different things that, that can frustrate us? You know, it's our job, our, our school, wife, husband, brother, sister, kids. No matter what your situation is right now, you can think of something that frustrates you, right? right? You, you, you probably got frustrated this morning getting ready. You couldn't get up in time. You, you got frustrated leaving the house. But I want to tell you that, that we don't have to be frustrated. As Christians, we can be thankful, and we can have a lifestyle of thankfulness. We need to decide that it's not just going to be an event of Thanksgiving once every November, we need to have thanksgiving each and every day of our life. Amen? God did not put us here on this earth to be busted, disgusted, mad, angry, frustrated every day of our life. And there's so many times, especially Christians, me being one of them, where that's all we are. And we forget about the, the fruit of the Spirit that lives inside of us. We forget that, that we need to be thankful we forget that we need to show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, self-control. We forget about all that. And I think in order to, to be able to show those fruits of the Spirit, we first have to be thankful, okay? So today, I wanna, wanna talk about this, um, this subject that God's laid on my heart. And the title of this message is, It's Time to Be Thankful. So for my note takers, let's write that down. So the, the first step, or the first thing you need to do to live a thankful life is take a step back and look what the Lord has done. So many times we forget where the Lord has brought us from. We, we've had a life where, you know, we've been through a lot, or maybe you haven't been through a lot, but you were in a, in a stagnant place, you were in a still place, you weren't moving in your life. Or maybe you've been through a lot. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Maybe you've been through addiction. Maybe you've um, been depressed, anxious, but we forget where we've came from and we get so wrapped up in where we're currently at that we forget to take a step back. Amen? So we need to take a step back and look what the Lord has done. Psalm 118.23 says this, The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Do you look back at your life and, and, and look what the Lord has done and say, and God, you really showed off in this part of my life. It is marvelous to see what you have done. Psalm 126.3 says, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Church, are you filled with joy this morning? Are you so thankful for what the Lord has done for you and your family that you are filled with joy? Do you have joy in your life? Come on, show your hands, show your hands. Here we go, it's 8 o'clock, you have joy in your life. Can you get up in the morning and, and, and sing that song that, that our worship team likes to, likes to sing quite a bit? You know, look what the Lord has done. Come on now. Look what the Lord has done. Come on now, in the back. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Come on, church. Do you have that kind of joy in your life? Are you so thankful for what the Lord has done for you and in you that you can wake up every morning and roll out of bed and start singing that song? I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you look like. If your legs hurting, if your back's hurting, there is something to be thankful for. There is something to be thankful for. Amen? <clears throat> Taking a step back and, and looking at what the Lord has done reminds me of... Uh, <laughs> this story, it, it, it involves me and, and Spencer Agee, and um, it's got to do with this tree that's in my backyard. So Sarah and I uh, moved into a new house in January, and the, the back part of the, of the land had three trees right up against the, the part of the yard that was mowed. Well, I got tired of looking at it. It was all grown up. There was thorns everywhere. There's bushes. There's vines going up the tree and this and that, and... Um, Spencer, thankfully, so thankful for you, Spencer, that he came that day and he started helping me clean this thing up. But as we, as we kept going, it was hot, we were sweaty, we were getting tired. We forgot to take a step back and look at what we had been doing. We kept chopping away, we kept doing this, we kept doing that, and it, it didn't seem like we were getting anywhere. You know, we kept chopping these thorn bushes we kept chopping these vines down. We kept chopping these bushes. We kept moving these rocks, moving this, moving that. And we were getting tired and frustrated. We were stuck right there in our current situation. But Spencer had the most profound word that day. He said, let's just, let's take a break for a second. Let's step, let's step back here. And when we step back, we're like, oh my gosh, that's a beautiful tree. And it's the same way with our life. We get so involved in our current situation, our current circumstance, and we become bitter and angry and frustrated and tired, and we forget to take a step back and look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. We've got to stop complaining and we've got to start thanking. And we cannot forget, church, where the Lord has brought us from. We cannot forget where the Lord has brought us from. 
Give thanks in all circumstances. Secondly, decide to move forward. So you're probably thinking, Drew, the first point was to take a step back. Yep, that's right. So why are you telling me to move forward after you told me to take a step back? Well, 2 Corinthians 3.18 tells us why. It says this, We all, with unveiled faces, are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the Spirit. So what does that mean, glory to glory? God wants to take you from glory to glory. So during that, that two period, right, we get busted and disgusted. We get upset. We get mad. We get frustrated. We lose that thankfulness. We lose that joy. But I, I, I want to remind you this morning that, that there's more to come. You keep moving forward and there is more to come. You keep going. You are in a, uh, maybe you're in a glory season right now and everything's going great. Praise God for that. But I, I, I'm going to tell you that there's a two coming. And that's going to be the cutting season. That's going to be when God starts pruning things out of your life. That's, that's going to be when, when God starts to refine your heart. And it's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. And it's going to be easy to lose your joy and lose your thankfulness. But I'm here to remind you that glory's coming. Glory is coming, and you got to keep moving forward. You got to keep moving forward. So you know when when Spencer and I took a step back and looked at that tree, we were like, "Man, that looks awesome." But we knew we still had work to do. How many of you know we still have work to do here on this earth? We still got things we got to get done in the name of Jesus. We still got, got family to, to win over to Jesus. We still got friends we got to win over to Jesus. We still got things in our life that we need to do so we can experience the glory of God. Who wants to experience the glory of God in this house today? Amen? Amen. So if we decide to quit, so, so we've got this glory stage, and then we move over to the two stage. And we decide to, to, to sit down. Oh, well, you know, that was a great time in my life. Man, then we're the good old, day, good old days, right, Eddie? The good old days. We get comfortable. We get stagnant. We stop coming to church regularly. We stop reading our Bible we stop doing devotions. We stop listening to praise and worship music. We start going back to the bar. We start drinking again. We start looking at things we don't need to be looking at. Amen? We get comfortable. The enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. So if we stay stagnant, if we get comfortable, he is going to destroy us. Amen? Can anybody testify that, that when you became stagnant in your life, and your walk with the Lord, that's when the enemy stepped in and started to whisper in your ear. You know, you're, you're doing good. It's all good. You can have a beer. Oh, you can look at this website. You can do this. You can do that. It's all good. God's got you. We got to keep moving forward, church. We can't, we can't continue to, to, to look back. We got to decide to move forward. We got to get our work done. We got to get our assignment done that, that God has given us here on this earth. We've got to take up our cross and go. Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Have you taken up your cross today? Have you taken up the cross in your life? Are you following Jesus the way you need to be following Jesus? Are you doing what you need to be doing to, to, to keep the enemy from infiltrating your, your body, your mind, your soul? Because if you give him an inch, I promise you, he will take a mile. So are you moving forward? Or are you being still and comfortable? We don't, we don't want anybody to have to experience anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, 
get addicted to, to drugs or pornography or whatever it may be. But it's when we decide, it's our choice, right? If we decide that we're going to stay still and not move forward, that's when all that's going to happen. That's when all that's going to happen. Third, how are we going to live a thankful lifestyle? We've got to linger in his presence. We've got to linger in the presence of the Lord. What does linger mean? Linger, linger means hanging out. Linger means staying around. Linger means staying connected. Linger means you can't get enough of him. So you've got to linger. You've got to linger. If we do not continually stay in his presence, we will instantly become frustrated. We will lose our joy and we will become stagnant in our walk with Christ. Can you testify today that after you've been to church, you've had an awesome altar experience, you've, you've felt a touch from the Lord, that if you, if you don't take that with you, a lot of times, once we walk out those back doors back there, we leave that, that touch here, we leave that presence here, we leave that feeling here, we leave that experience here. But church, I want to remind you today that you can take that experience with you. You can take that touch with you. You can keep his presence with you at all times. Amen. What happens when you accept Jesus into your life? You get that Holy Spirit downloaded into your heart. His spirit lives inside of you. So let me let you in on a little secret. His presence is with you all the time. We were created in his image. Amen. And once we accept him into our life, we have activated that Holy Spirit. And we can have that Holy Spirit experience no matter where we are. No matter whether we're at work, we're in our car, in our bedroom, wherever it may be. Let me throw in a bar in there too. Jesus goes to the bar. And he convicts in the bar. You got to take him with you. You got to keep it going. You got to keep that faucet turned on. That living water, that, that faucet needs to continually be going into your heart, into your mind. When you are staying in the presence of God, you are automatically going to be thankful. Automatically going to be thankful. If you've got the presence of God coming out of you, you've got those fruits of the Spirit coming out of you. And if you've got those fruits of the Spirit coming out of you, you're going to be thankful. And it works both ways. If you become thankful, those fruits of the Spirit are automatically going to start coming out of you. Okay? No matter what it is, the good, the bad, the ugly, you are going to be thankful if you stay in His presence. When you experience adversity, you're going to be able to, 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 to quote words from the Bible. The, the Word is going to be flowing through you. You know, somebody makes you mad. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I am the head and not the tail. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Come on, church. Are you all excited about what, what God can do for you? If you will remain in God's presence and you will remain thankful, some great things are to come. Great things are to come. When you experience joy, you will thank him, which should be every day because his word says that his mercies are new every morning. We've been reading this book in our, in our Sunday school class. It's called Rebuilding the Altar. And a, a, a quote from this book says this, True transformation doesn't happen until you have an experience with God. Have you had an experience with God? Are you in here this morning because you wanted to, to check your name off? Or did you come here this morning because you want to have an experience with God? Do you want to continually fill yourself up with the presence of God? You have to make a choice, church. You have to say, yes, I want to experience God. God is standing there waiting on you to say yes to him. Are you ready to say yes? Are you ready to experience God in a mighty way? So you're probably thinking, yeah, that, that, that sounds good, Drew. That sounds, sounds really good. But you don't know what I've been through. You don't know my situation. You don't know what's going on in my life. 
Well, you're right, sir. You're right, ma'am. But the Bible says we're supposed to give thanks in all circumstances. That's what the Bible says. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. And I want to give you something right now to allow you to stay in God's presence. And we read this in the, in the, in the book that we're reading, and it's just, it was so profound to me that in order to stay in his presence, you have to tie yourself to the altar. Tie yourself to the altar. Don't be scared of this place up here, people. Don't be scared of this place. This is where change happens. This is where bondages are broke. This is where chains are left. This is where everything that you've been through in your life, you can leave it laying right here at the altar. But in order to keep that experience going, you have to tie yourself to the altar and drag it out that back door with you. As bad as you, you might not want to, but I'm begging you, tie yourself to the altar. Stay in God's presence. Stay in God's presence. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? I got, got an idea for you. So God gave me this while we were studying this book and reading this book, talking about tying ourselves to the altar. So what do we leave at the altar? We leave chains. Chains break at the altar. Chains are left at the altar. But what I think the, the, the enemy does is he boxes all these chains up, and then he starts to remind you after you did not tie yourself to the altar and tie yourself to the presence of God, Satan tries to remind you of what you've done in your past. And when you start getting reminded of what you've done in your past, then you lose your thankfulness. You lose your joy. You lose that, that conviction. You lose that desire to continue to move forward. So church, what I'm telling you today is in order to tie yourself to the altar, you've got to use the chains that you left here. You've got to use the chains that you left here. Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. It's time that we stop allowing Satan to use our past against us, and you grab this chain, and you tie yourself as tight as you can to this altar, and you stay in the presence of God. You get to the point where you can say, Devil, no more. I'm not going to let you do this anymore. I'm not going to let you use this against me anymore. The Bible says that, that what you meant for evil, God meant for good, and I'm ready to start using it for good. I'm ready to, 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 to tell somebody in here today that you've got to start telling people that remind you about your past to look and see what God did. I used to be tied to the world over here. I used to be tied to addiction. I used to be tied to depression. I used to be tied to anxiety. But now I'm tied to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am tied to the presence of the Holy Spirit. I am tied to my Savior. I am tied to my healer. I am tied to the one true King. And one day he's going to come back and get us, church. One day he's going to come back and get us. Think of those times when you've been up here and you've started laying it all down at the altar and you felt that Holy Spirit overcome you and you didn't want to give it up. Church, you don't have to give it up. You can take it with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. There's no one but Jesus who can break these chains off of you. But there's no one but you that can make the choice to use these chains for the glory of God, to tie yourself to the altar, to tie yourself to the presence of the Lord. Praise team, y'all come. What's your choice today, church? Are you gonna be thankful today? Are you gonna be thankful for what the Lord has done in your life? Are you going to take a step back today? I want you to do that. I want you to do a, a self-evaluation. 
take a step back and, and look what the Lord has done. It should be marvelous in your eyes. I want to go back to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Where it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We talk all the time about how we want to be in the will of God. We want to do God's will. Well, why aren't we thankful? Why aren't we giving thanks in all circumstances? Like I was saying earlier, when somebody makes me mad or when we mess up, thank him. He's trying to do something through that situation. He's not out to get you. God's not out to get you. God's out to prosper you, not to harm you. God wants you to be joyful. God wants you to live an awesome life here on this earth. He wants you to experience heaven here on this earth. But we have to make that choice. So what's your choice today, church? Are you going to choose to be in God's will? We say we want to be in God's will all the time. But here's where the rubber meets the road. This altar is open, and it's time for you to respond. Are you going to use the chains that Satan once used against you to tie yourself to the altar so you can be in the presence of God continually? Is there something that you need to, to come lay down up here that's been weighing you down for so long? Is there a family member that needs to come back to Jesus? Or is there one of you out there that you hear this word and it, it, it sounds really good, but maybe you're not saved. In order to be in the will of God, you have to be a child of God. And if you want to be able to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, you've got to accept him into your heart. So church, I invite you to this altar. I invite you to come, come lay it down, whatever may be weighing on you today as we go into this week of Thanksgiving. Do you have something against a, a family member that you may be trying to avoid this coming week? Well, I'll tell you, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, then your prayers go up to the ceiling and they come right back down. Is there somebody in this church that you need to forgive? It's time to be thankful, church. It's time to be thankful. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for this word that you have for your people. And God, I thank you for each one that's under my voice today. Lord Jesus, I just pray... Uh, a blessing over them today that they will receive that spirit of thankfulness. That the joy will be so apparent in them that everybody they come in contact with will know that they've been in the presence of God. So God, move. God, work.